Hi guys, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress and today we're somewhere a little bit different. We're in my kitchen because that is where I'm currently doing my ironing. It's where I'm doing my ironing because I think it's the best filming setup to show you because I am going to be showing you how to use this stuff. Now this isn't scotch tape, this is waterproof seam tape. So this is really, really useful stuff if you are planning on making yourself a raincoat because even if you buy really lovely waterproof or showerproof fabric and you could spend lots of money on that if you wanted to every time your needle pierces that fabric you're making a hole which water can get through and the idea of making a raincoat is so that you don't get wet <laughs> so this stuff is really useful now I am I am I am making the Willa vest by Layla Jane patterns which is one of March's so my style patterns and I thought it would be really useful to show you this like what I've learned from using this because basically I couldn't really find much information about it online everything I looked at just said apply the seam tape and I learned a lot in my practice coat so I twirled the coat and then I made a like, Pacamac version really lightweight fabric really lightweight lining just to practice all of the pattern techniques and work out what I wanted to change because this pattern is not really designed to be a raincoat and I am going to be doing a vlog talking about kind of turning a jacket pattern into a raincoat pattern and the things you need to think about and change um, if, you, if you want to do that but I specifically thought a separate vlog on <laughs> this stuff would be really helpful um, because it, I just haven't found that much information out there and I just think I learned a lot while I was doing the Pacamac version that I wish I'd known <laughs> but I'm pleased I knew for when I was making my kind of main proper coat. So this fabric that I have from Textile Express is a beautiful green. It's actually, it's coming up a little bit teal on camera but it's kind of a bright green and or like a bottle, a bright bottle green? A Kelly green I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, and it's a waterproof fabric and this is my like proper everyday coat this is what I'm really excited about wearing I live in England it rains a lot it's good to have a raincoat on you <laughs> for all circumstances and I've basically been wearing my husband's coat for about a year because my waterproof coat went not very waterproof anymore and I just kind of adopted his <laughs> so he's excited about me making this as well and yeah let's kind of just crack on with the seam tape um top tips that I've learned um, I'm not saying I'm an expert in this stuff. I would love it if you guys have used this stuff before and have top tips to pop it in the comments box because I am going to be doing a vlog talking about how to kind of convert a normal jacket into a raincoat and I'll add anything else that you guys think might be useful onto that. So I think I've got everything I need here. So things you're going to need, obviously what you're pressing. So this is the outer um, coat piece but it's the inside of the outer. Um, you're also obviously going to need the waterproof tape. Now, I had a few questions about this. I found it quite difficult to get and quite difficult to find. Um, this comes in a 20 meter roll. I bought it on eBay and I'll pop a link down below of where I bought it from. You can buy it per meter um, from a company called Pro Fabrics and I believe you can also buy it from a company called Pennine Fabrics but I think that's by the meter and I think that's quite tough because I had no context of how much I was actually gonna need. Um, to give you some context, one 20 meter roll has done a jacket like with very, very little left. Um, and that's a hooded princess seamed with pockets jacket in a 2XL, <laughs> just to give you some concept. So, um, I ordered a couple they're not it's not particularly expensive I was asked about tips for um, waterproofing that doesn't require ironing and also how to tell good and bad waterproof tape because I found it hard to find I'm not the expert on that but I would absolutely love it if you guys have tips to pop down below um, you can buy waterproof sprays but they really are designed to kind of recoat a fabric so this is a waterproof fabric and it uh, it would recoat the kind of um, outer of the of the coat rather than um, seal the inside. So everything I've found 
for sealing the inside is tape that requires heat I'm afraid there is also a glue that you can use um, but from what I read and understood it wasn't very good for garment construction because it made the seam really stiff rather than flexible so seam tape I've also got an ironing board this is my tabletop ironing board um, that I'm using here in the kitchen um, I've also got my tailor's ham this is a beautiful tailor's ham that I got from a company called of course it's for you um, because I was too lazy to make myself one <laughs> and I really love it I've also got a sleeve board which has not been recovered yet but will be eventually and um, these things are not essential but if you have curved seams and if you have a princess seam coat or just sleeves on your coat you're, you're gonna want something to try and make this as easy as possible for you you're also going to need a pair of scissors and um, for trimming the tape and also the seam allowance and press cloths now i have two and they're not proper press cloths you could use proper press cloths if you have them um i've just got a tea towel because you need a wide area um press cloth and then i've got this is just a strap it's a scrap piece of fabric from a toile that i made it's a waistband tie um but a long thin um scrap is really useful wide enough to cover your tape but uh, not super wide but quite long and I'll explain why in a minute you're obviously also going to need an iron this is a Morphe Richards Turbo Steam Pro IntelliTemp iron um, which uh, was recommended to me by Jay at the Camden Stitch and I'll pop her video all about finding a good pressing iron below so on to the top tips now, as you can see, I've already applied some waterproof tape to this. I've done about half of the coat at the minute. And I just kind of wanted to try and show you, and I'm, not, I'm hoping this comes out quite well. And if you can see this, this section here, it's almost gone completely see-through. Um, whereas the tape is a bit like scotch tape and has kind of a translucent effect. This is almost gone see-through. This is the bond that you're looking for. And you'll be able to see it once it's there because it really does change kind of texture. It really bonds to the fabric. Whereas if you can see, obviously down here, this bit's peeling and even this bit here, it still feels soft. It still feels like the, um, like the tape rather than kind of bonded to the fabric. But that's okay. It doesn't mean it's gone wrong. Um, it just means it still needs more heat. So top tip number one, and most of the little tips that I'm gonna be talking about while I film this, are going to be related to the fact that you should not apply direct heat to this tape it will melt like interfacing and all like gunge up um, and will also like fold up on in on itself like tape does um, this is sounds really obvious uh, but honestly this was the biggest mistake I made in the Packamac version I made um, was that I kept applying direct heat to this obviously completely by mistake but this is a really difficult thing to do because logistically you've got a coat, you've got a roll of this, you've got iron, you've got kind of all kinds of stuff going on and you have already already taped seams that if you apply direct heat to will ruin this bit. Now you can patch over it, it's not the end of the world if it happens but everything you should be trying to do is to avoid applying direct heat to this tape or this tape that's already here so next top tip I will now kind of actually start taping <laughs> is to trim your seam allowances to ensure a proper seal now if you can see I've got a seam allowance here that hasn't been trimmed and if I add let me pull it over a little bit so you can see oh I just shook the camera sorry um if you can see the the tape is wide enough to cover the stitching and the seam because that's what you need you need to cover the stitching and the seam i'm just going to pull this down a little bit and i think you might be able to see that a little bit better now so this will cover it it is wide enough but it is only just wide enough 
and it is quite hard to make this form a seal so you want to make this as easy as possible for yourself so you really do want to trim your seam allowances down nice and small now you should be doing this anyway if you're making a coat <laughs> because you want to reduce bulk particularly in a lined coat um but yeah it's worth reminder it of remindering reminding you that trimming the seam down is really good now you have two options obviously um, you can open the seams out flat and put, lay the tape across or you can fold them over to one side now I've chosen to fold these over to one side partly because it's easier to form that seal because you've got a bit more um, control over where the seam is when it's under the press cloth but also because I have a curved seam because I'm a princess seam coat I'm not a princess seam coat but the coat I'm making is a princess seam coat so that makes it a little bit easier so top tip number three is take your time do a small piece at a time and really kind of be careful um while you're doing this you need to turn your temperature up to max lay your press cloth over oh this has turned itself off um and really hold down this heat onto the seam tape you do not want to be kind of pushing back and forwards on it. You really want to let the heat sink in to that tape and kind of stick. And what you'll start to see is as you've done this, the tape has started to seal and that's formed a really nice seal there. Um, this keeps its heat really hot, this. One thing I would say is do make sure before you do this that you've tested how your fabric takes how your outer fabric takes to um, the lining because it uh, takes to the heat because it can be quite difficult now you know how top tip number one was um don't apply direct heat that also means don't put your hot press cloth over areas that you don't want to melt so for example this section here on the roll if i were to put the directly hot um press cloth that i just had heated over it that would be bad <laughs> it would um, break it would break up that that tape so you need to be really careful now if you can see this section here is sealed really well but just underneath here it's still quite um, translucent it's not stuck on so I'm going to cover over with the smaller press cloth and just put a little bit of extra heat on this bottom bit here you do really need to take your time with this um, you do need to do a small bit at a time and you need to be okay to um, repeat sections and also apply little patches so on some in some cases particularly where there's quite a raised seam um, there you go and you can see now that's formed a nice seal um, it can be quite difficult to get this nice and smooth and you can patch it over if you happen to break some or it hasn't quite formed a seal properly so now we're moving into a curved seam section, so I'm going to get my tailor's ham out and that should help me seal it nicely. Now, if you can see, I am keeping this on the roll. Now, the reason for that is because there is a right side and a wrong side of this fabric, of this fabric, of this tape. And if you apply heat to the wrong side, it's going to stick into your press cloth, which just causes a mess and is a bit of a pain and not what you want. It's a waste, basically. So I tend to, at least until I've attached some of this, keep this on the roll because then I know that I'm applying the right side. It's very difficult to tell the right side and the wrong side from feel and from touch. So this is quite a helpful thing to remember. But what I might do, particularly as I was reach, reaching a curved section, is then cut a section to length um, so that I don't have to worry about melting anything that's on this tape. Now, when you move on to a curved seam, um, it's good to remember that while this uh, tape is hot, you can, it is tacky and you can sort of bend and stretch it a little bit. It doesn't really have a lot of give to it before it's had any heat applied. But what I'll try and do is show you how I've been managing these curved seams. Now, one thing to point out is that if a seam that you've just done um, has mostly sealed quite well, but has a little bit that is still um, unsealed it's worth just leaving it for a little while um, 
and then you can always go back to it and reapply heat later because this section will still be hot and you don't want to overheat it and melt it so just kind of move on you're going to be going back and trying this over and over again anyway so don't worry <laughs> you should be able to see a little bit better now what i'm doing is i'm heating up the very top of that section there and then you can see it's much easier for me to bring this round and match the curve it's a little bit fiddly but it's easier kind of once you get going with it and then you can move up the section and one of the reasons I like a long thin um, cloth is because you can fold it to cover previously um, melted <laughs> pressed sections and then you can apply heat here and you're not worried then about catching a little bit here which would melt it and be difficult. Now I'm pretty happy with that. There's a little section here that I'm gonna patch because you can see it's wrinkled slightly. And um, so I'll add a slightly kind of bigger section over that just to cover it. But now I'm gonna go back to sort the pockets. Now it's worth remembering here that you really don't wanna miss any seam <laughs> because you really need, you know, to cover everything if you're gonna make this waterproof. And you are going to all the effort of making a line jacket. Um, and I have made, uh, quilted this is a quilted version so I really really don't want to then find that I can't wear it when it's wet so I'm going to cover over that section that's already been sewn cover over this and then apply apply heat now I have found that these pockets are quite challenging because they have a real step they're a real bulky seam so it's worth sort of doing one side of the seam and then kind of worrying about the rest of it and going back later um, because there's such a step here and it's because I've I've padded the or I've lined the um, pockets with padding so they're quite bulky so there's a bit of a step there and it's difficult for the iron to really apply proper heat but what I found is now the inner bit is sealed I can leave it for a little while come back to it later and really go in there with that iron now you can also see that where I'm putting the roll, I'm really making sure it's away from, from the heat. So what I'm actually gonna do is I kind of did that the wrong way around. I'm gonna put it this way because it's then away from the area or that side that the heat is coming to it from. So I'm gonna pop that down. I'm gonna cover up that area again that I was worried about. Apply the larger press cloth over this bit pop this down here as well and then press Now you guys probably don't need to see me in detail seal all of these seams so I'll film some of it and I'll speed it up and pop it in. Please ask me any questions if you have any and I'll just stop and let you know when I've got something to say. As I'm trimming this down, I'm realising that it's probably worth me telling you that before I'm trimming these seams down, I've ironed all of these from both sides to make sure that they lay nice and flat. So um, don't expect the ironing or the pressing of the waterproofing to be your press. You know, you want the seam to lie nice and flat before that, because otherwise what you'll be doing is applying a, a seal to an unpressed um seam and then you'll end up with the outside not being nice and flat and crisp but not really being able to do very much about it because there's a seal over the top of it um, from the bottom so even though you might press it you're not gonna get very far with it so do make sure that all of these are pressed up before you trim them or certainly before you apply the tape 
Now, particular seams that you really want to take care of are the shoulder seams um, and the hood. That's partly why the hood took me so long. You know, I was still quite new to it, but also I really wanted to make sure that it was nice. So I just sort of cracked on then. Um, you might have seen and hopefully I'll have commented or added some text or some voice um, to explain a couple of bits. But you saw me having to patch a section on the seam on the sleeve here um, because I hadn't quite covered the, uh, the seam allowance. And also, importantly, um, you might have been able to see it puckering slightly when I laid out the piece to trim it to size. That's because it was still hot. And that's what I mean about don't apply direct heat to this. You know, it can really impact the, the um, material. Now, as you can see, my worst seam is where the collar joins. Now, I'm going to go over that as much as I physically can. You can see it seals really well on the flatter bits and really not very well on the more curved bits. So I'm going to get my ham in there and try and seal those a little bit more. It's quite tricky to know like where to put the hood <laughs> when you're doing that. Um, but now all I've got left is the two um, arm side seams. Now, you saw how difficult it was for me shoehorning the sleeve press into um, the sleeve to try and get the sleeve seam done. So I'm going to do my best um, to get the ham in there to do this arm size sections in parts. Now I'm not too worried if I don't get all of the arm side because right at the bottom I'm probably not going to be waving that bit around in the rain so I'm hoping that will be okay. Also I just want to comment on the order of this. So I am attempting to do most of this in one go at the end once the garment is constructed because I think that that leaves for less chance for you to kind of ruin the seal as you're sewing and manipulating the fabric. But I am considering how if I do this again, um, which this, this process hasn't put me off doing it again, so hopefully I will one day, um, I might do the sleeves first. Um, not first, but like before I've actually sewn them into um, the garment. Now on this pattern, you actually sew the sleeve in on the flat, so that wouldn't quite work. But I do want to kind of have a think about that because I think it's an important area to waterproof and I want to make sure that the seal is nice and strong. Um, you'll notice that I'm doing this in small sections. Now, wherever possible, I've tried to do long strips of waterproof um, seal all the way up the arms, for example, all the way along the side seams. But this, the arm side is difficult and I don't want it to wrinkle too much. So I'm doing it in stages. The ham through the um, arm side works really well, actually. So I would definitely recommend that if you can. And then I'll just be moving it along in very small chunks and trying to get it done. Now, what I'm going to do is work around the shoulder seam because at the top is the most important bit to seal really nicely. So, and this one is going to be a bit of a pig, I can tell. <laughs> now, I also said at the start, you want you don't want to be moving the iron around too much. You kind of want to hold it on. Now, I'm moving the iron a bit more for this 
um, seam just because it's such a curve and it's going to be hard to um, to seal otherwise but what I'm really trying to do is to is to keep the heat on as long as possible because then it's going to actually seal and as you can see while I was doing that I ruined the seal on this bit here so I'm going to have to go back and patch that up as well just wanted to show you what I meant about um, applying direct heat. So this is what's happened. I've just accidentally applied. It actually wasn't the iron. It was just the hot heat out onto this from when I was sealing this seam. And this has happened. So this is why it made tip top tip number one. <laughs> because it's a pain. So I'm just doing the underarm seam. And I wanted to show you the difference like more clearly in a really really good bond which is here compared to kind of a less good bond up here so this is what you're aiming for obviously this bit hasn't even been heated yet although I just folded it in on itself and now it's stuck that's what I told you don't apply direct heat um but yeah so this really is what you're aiming for so that it really has completely bonded to the fabric so I have lots of re-ironing to do but that's fine because it's all a process and once it's applied, it's a lot easier to add extra heat to. So I haven't filmed all of this, but um, I've filmed a bit for you and told you a few of my top tips. What I just wanted to say is that while I'm going over this now, just to check all of the seams and make sure they've really bonded nicely, is one of the best things I've found is for literally just to leave the iron on it for a little while. Um, not move it around at all and just make, really make sure that you're applying heat for a, a solid amount of time and um, to really bond this and it's just making such a big difference so I will hopefully have this finished in the next half an hour or so so that I can then attach the lining to the coat and um, this has taken me about two two and a half hours I would say probably two hours and that's about half of the coat. So you're looking at a four to five hour task uh, for wa for waterproofing this. But I cannot wait to have this coat in my wardrobe and look at the pretty lining. And I've quilted the lining and I've put in so much effort that I just can't wait to be wearing it now. So I'm going to be popping up some more videos about this jacket and my Packamac version as well. Um, I am the featured blogger for Sew My Style this month. Uh, which every time I say makes me feel like I'm being really pretentious <laughs> and show-offy, um, which I'm really not intending to be. Um, but it does mean that uh, I'm making up this coat and trying to help other people and answer any questions that people have uh, to like about the make. So do go check out the pattern. Remember that this waterproofing kind of top tips apply to any pattern that you're trying to waterproof. And um, yeah, I hope it's been useful. Please let me know if you have any other questions. And until next time, bye!